Dead Souls! Dead Souls! Dead Souls! Hey everybody, how are you doing today? Or tonight, I guess, as the case may be. Martin, bravo, bravo to you, sir. Hey, RD, so glad to see you, even though I can't see you. This is one of my favorite sewing friends, Rihanna Dempson. She moved from my great state of Virginia back to what she probably believes is her great home state but she has even been in the Dad Sew studio. She taught me how to sew a zippered bag. You should definitely check out that episode. Miss you, RD. And uh, Mama Mary says, ready and surfing, surf, what is this? Surfing in Arkansas. Is there any surfing in Arkansas? <laughs> I'm not sure how that works, but that's an interesting name. So. Thank you for uh, dropping by. I truly appreciate it. Um, hi, Christy. Hello to you, ma'am. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about some thread that I got at a grocery store. But before we start that, have you seen my Christmas tree skirt skirt? You know, the tree skirts, the thing you put around the bottom of your Christmas tree. It's called a tree skirt. And then I made a Christmas tree skirt skirt for my daughter. I'm going to show it to you. Now, I don't have any of the felt ornaments on it because I had folded it up and I didn't want them to fall out, but this is the Christmas tree skirt skirt. I showed you how to make a circle skirt. Circle skirt, whoo. Now, RD sent me a message and said, hey, I've got this other uh, circle skirt method I'm gonna send you. I'm not sure she ever did, but she's going to, so I can see that. But here's the one thing I didn't show on the video, and that's me putting the lights on the circle skirt. How cool is this? All right, that's super cool, right? Here, I'm gonna show you on my handy dandy cam here. Bam, look at these. It's just pretty cool. I like how it lights up. Oh, it can even blink. Let's see, there we go. Man, I love this thing. My daughter loves this thing. It's just a, it's a really cool project. Now the cool thing about felt is that you can make ornaments out of felt and they'll stick to this. But if you want, you can see the back side here is just wires, hot glued. I just got LED wires from Amazon and I linked to that in the video so you can do that. And I've got these cool buttons which I'm gonna be giving away some of these buttons. Here, let me show you some of the buttons here. Here we go. Got this cool little birdie button. Got this cool elephant button right here. Well, it's upside down. There you go. How cool are these? Very, very neat. So I'm gonna be giving away some of these custom wooden buttons today, okay? Hey, Kayla, how are you doing today? And uh, RD said, uh, miss you too. Ooh, I'll work on that for you. Yeah, you said you were gonna send me a link and you didn't, but that's okay. Happens to the best of us, namely me. So thank you guys for joining me. Hey, before we start, if you scroll down and see the share button, it really would help if you click share and then shared it on Facebook. I mean, it's very easy to do. You just click share and on the F and you know, share it the F out of here. Oh, that was horrible. So uh, the only thing about not having the live audience here, like I did when I used to do stand up for years and years, is that I don't hear any moans or groans, but that's okay. I get to say whatever I want. Um, Mama Mary said, cute, my daughter would love that too. Really, it's so easy to do, and uh, I found the easiest way for me um, with the circle skirt, and I put it in the tutorial. It's our latest video. You should check it out here on YouTube. Um, dot com slash dad sews and uh, you should make one and then send me pictures or tag me on Instagram because I love seeing when people make stuff that I've made or they've learned how to make from my channel that's just it's really cool and I love it um, hey Margaret how are you doing tonight um, yeah it's really fun now I use a compass for my circle skirt but really if you want to make a giant circle skirt you know a really long one or something 
you can take a yardstick and put a nail in one end, drill a hole in the other end, and that way you get a perfect circle. Doing the string method, now RD said she knows another string method, but just putting a pen in a string and putting a, a, a pencil or whatever in, in the other end of the string, sometimes it can bend. So you get a, a wonky uh, circle. It's not always even, so. All right, Martin says awesome. Well, I think it's awesome that I'm joined by a guy, Martin. So thank you so much, I truly appreciate it. The great thing about dad sews is that I'm a dad that sews, right? And the other thing I do is fail. So that's why our motto is so fail repeat. But I always like seeing another dude drop in, Martin. Truly, truly think that is awesome. All right, so Margaret says, I'm excited to see how the thread will do. Well, I'm gonna show you that thread right now. There we go. So I was at one of our new, new to us <laughs> grocery stores, Lidl. Now you probably know Lidl and Aldi. There are these new like budget friendly grocery stores that are popping up everywhere. Aldi's the tiny one. And Lidl is the one that has a grocery store on this side, a grocery store on this side, and then random stuff <laughs> right down the middle if you haven't been in one. So the first time I went in a Lidl, I bought a pair of shoes. Yes, yes, I am officially a sad dad. I bought a pair of shoes at a grocery store. But I'll be honest with you, the price was right and they are comfortable. <laughs> and I put on special laces so at least they don't look so generic. So anyway, Margaret said she loves Lidl. Um, I, I really love the store. You cannot do all your grocery shopping there though. And I as much as I love fancy grocery stores and Trader Joe's and even Kroger, which is a full-size grocery store, but can sometimes be expensive at times, I'm a Walmart grocery store person. I can find everything I need there. I mean, really, I can find, I'd say 99% of what I need there. You can't find 70% uh, of what you need at Alito. So I couldn't, couldn't even find frozen carrots. So there we go. All right. That's enough of my grocery store talking. But anyway, I was traveling down that middle no man's aisle at Lidl and I saw that they had sewing kits which were sold out, which should tell you they're either cheap or good or both. And then I saw these packs of thread. Now these cost $5.99 from Lidl. Now, as you can see, you get two whites, you get two blacks, you get a dark gray, a light gray, I'm going to call this mauve. You get a couple greens, a red, burgundy, yellow, uh, three different blues. Well, four if you count teal as blue, pink, and then you've got some light beige and a brown. Now, I think this is a phenomenal deal for $5.99. But the question is, is it any good? All right. so. Let's go ahead and crack this baby open. I have not done this before. Just like all my video at Dad Sews, when I sew it on video, that's the first time I've sewn it. So you get to see all my failures. Because if you don't wanna see failure, watch another person sewing video. They'll show you something that ends up perfect after they fixed all the mistakes and not showing you how to do it. I'm gonna show you how to fix the mistakes if I have them. Hopefully this isn't too noisy for you. No? All right. Woo, caught it. All right, so, I mean, I really like, I like the thread when it's got um, some of the spools sticking out at both ends. I don't know why, I just kind of, I don't know, I like it, I prefer it. So let's see how this opens up. You can slide these off. Now here's my problem with thread, of course, like we all have, is finding the end. Oh, okay, that wasn't that hard. Well, that's one end. All right, like I said, I do everything for the first time on the show. So, now what I should have done was grabbed my seam ripper, which I'm gonna do right now. Somebody just came to the show and said, where is he? All right, uh, this is, this is kind of a pain in the butt. So you've already like uh, made me mad. I'm already angry at this thread. I'm not sure where I'm supposed to be pulling it from. There's nothing worse than that, than not knowing where you're supposed to be pulling the thread from. 
Ah. Frustrating, Lidl. There we go. See, now that I've cut it, though, it's going to break off uneven, and it's not going to do what it's supposed to do. All right, let's go for another one. <laughs> and this is why you watch Dad Sews, right? To see the mistakes. But this is why we're testing this, because if it's not easy to use, then what's the point in getting it, right? All right, let's see. This time I'm going to do it what I think is the right way. All right, there we go. If you do it the proper way, it's not that big a deal. So what you need to do is slide it out. All right, now the spools are definitely, um, are they plastic or cardboard? They feel like they're cardboard. They're thicker than a toilet paper roll, but they're not plastic like some spools are, which is probably better for the environment, but it's a pain in the butt if you crush them. All right, so let's go ahead and pull this out with some existing good thread that we have. Now, if we're comparing thread, you want to test the, was it the tensile strength? That, that took a lot to, to pull and to rip. So let's see, what does this feel like? It, honestly, it felt about the same. It felt about the same. That's not bad. This is a little weaker, a little bit weaker than the thread I had. Now, here's the other issue I already noticed. This hole is way bigger, way bigger than the hole in a regular spool of thread. So that means it's gonna rattle around your machine a lot. And even if it does a good job in the feed, it's gonna be noisy. These are things you really should think about when you're buying stuff. All right, let's see. Karenke said, are Lidl shops German? Which I would expect to be good. Um, I'm not sure, I, I, you know what? I Googled it and I've forgotten. That's really sad that I've already forgotten that. You know, they say that because we have access to Google um, so readily now that we don't actually remember anything or hold knowledge in our head. And apparently that's true because <laughs> you can just re-Google it. All right, I'm going to adjust my tension here just so I can rip it through the machine. All right, let's see. There we go. You know what I should probably do is grab some th uh, fabric to, <laughs> to test this with. But not only some fabric, I'll probably grab some felt. Oh, see that just broke pulling it through the machine. All right, well. I like to just see how much abuse it can take because let's be honest, it's gonna get abused in your machine, right? Or by me. <laughs> All right, there we go. So who else, uh, Margaret said they are German. Yeah, I always, uh, I thought they were gonna be um, like Swedes, like Ikea, <laughs> when I first looked them up. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in my needle. It does have an automatic needle threader, okay, my machine, because it's an awesome jukey. But what I'm trying to do is see how bad it frays when I cut it with things like my seam ripper, because I don't always have my scissors ready. I'm gonna grab my scissors. Grab my shears here. I was hoping I wouldn't need them. Honestly, I was hoping I wouldn't need the shears because I was like, man, if I can thread it without using them and having to have that sharp edge on my thread, that's a good sign. But it does fray, which all thread does fray, but. Well, it's not looking good. All right, there we go. I kind of feel like it's not sliding through my machine very well, like at all. I have the tension all the way turned down and it just feels like it's not as slippery, you know what I mean? Or as slick as other thread is when it moves through the machine. All right, so I'm gonna take a piece of felt and I'm gonna go ahead and see what we have here. I'm gonna use the existing thread I had in my machine for the bobbin. All right, let's see. I'm going to do a zigzag stitch, too. I 
Well, she's looks like she's sewing, but I'm not seeing anything here. Not not good so far. Let's see. All right, it's sliding good now. We'll give it another shot. Now, have any of you actually bought Oh, Mary says, hi, Christian, I love your tutorials. Thanks, Mary. Well, this is something a little bit different where we actually test something on the fly, but I totally appreciate that. Has anybody here bought thread from Lidl or their sewing pack? Because I really wanted to get one of their sewing packs, but they were all out. Now, some of you might be going, oh, it was user error, but I don't know if it was. I think when I pulled on the thread, it actually kind of overstretched it some, which kind of would, it would worry me a little bit. All right, let's see what this looks like on our camera. I don't think it looks too bad. Nice straight stitch. I mean, of course, the Juki is going to solve a lot of your problems for you, okay? And there it is with the white thread in back. I think that looks pretty good, actually. Of course, this isn't a perfect test or anything. You have to test it in different types of fabric, but it does seem to be holding up pretty good. All right, let's run it through just a, a little bit more here. Let's put it through its paces. Now I'm gonna adjust the thread tension back down to where it should be, and then see if it does any worse for the wear. Again, it's not a perfect scientific test, but We'll, we'll change our settings some there. I'll just randomly move the dials. It's not a perfectly scientific test, but we should be able to see if the thread handles up or handles the changes that we put it through. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the thread there and I'm gonna adjust the tension again. Put it all the way up to plus three. All right, drop that down. Nancy said it looks pretty good. It does, it does look pretty good. You know, I had to tell uh, Rihanna, who's watching, um, <laughs> I had to tell her that I had a little button to cut the thread when she was in the studio filming. So that, that always cracks me up. And she's like, I should have known it had that. I was like, it's cool, it's cool. Calm down, RD. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, oh, I still had my cam up. Sorry about that. All right, there we go. So that's, that's not too bad. That's not, not too bad. All right, now here's the deal. I, um, I think that for what you get, you get a lot for $5.99. I've never gotten this much for $5.99 at a general big box sewing store. We all know the one I'm talking about, right? The one everybody goes to because you have to sometimes. The one that sells more holiday decorations than thread sometimes. <laughs> yeah, we all know what store I'm talking about. I'm not going to say their name because one day they might pay me some money. So, <laughs> But I've never gotten this good of a deal for this good thread. Now, when I've gotten cheap thread at that particular big box store or at Walmart, um, it definitely breaks right away. All right, surfing, um, surfing in Arkansas. <laughs> so I totally said your name wrong earlier. I was getting a brain fart. You asked if it's uh, cotton or poly. It's 100% polyester. All right, and you get, uh, here, we'll put this up on the cam. Oh, it was up. Sorry about that, guys. There you go. And again, it's 100% polyester. All right. All right. Well, I'm honestly, I, I kind of feel like it went good. Rihanna said you really need to test the durability. Um, I think she said that. Let's see. Don't know about the durability. Yeah. Um, I will say this. It's not popping when I pull it, of course I did do a zigzag stitch, but we all know if you pull it enough, you're gonna rip the thread. 
it's, it's holding on pretty good. And the thing about testing it with felt, the reason I like testing it with felt is if you pull felt hard enough, eventually the felt will rip. So I could probably get this felt to start ripping right here around the seam and it's not happening. I mean, I'm not a strong man or anything. I do sewing tutorials on YouTube, but it's, it's really holding up good. <laughs> it's, it's holding up phenomenally well. Um, Kaz Kiwi says hi from New Zealand. Hey, how are you? I'm glad to have you. Love uh, our Australian and New Zealand fans. The Kiwi in your name kind of gives it away. Right now you're seeing me pretend to be strong. Honestly, this is holding up really well. I I'm very, I'm pretty happy with that. And if I pull the loose thread that's there, it's not wanting to rip like some cheap thread does. If you pull the loose thread, if you haven't backstitched um, after you've run it through your machine, it'll actually pop loose and then the thread will come out further down and then further down, so on and so forth. All this did was tighten up and it's not ripping. That's a really good, really good sign. Here, I'll show you this. What I did was I pulled it there and not ripping one bit, really pulling hard. All it did was tighten down. That's one of my tests for durability when I test cheap thread and uh, I'm kind of happy with that. All right, so here's the deal. In anticipation that this thread would be good, I got a couple of these to send out to some folks. So that is gonna be a good thing. So one of you viewers is gonna get that. I'm gonna give a chance to some people to watch it that aren't watching live. Ooh. I'm gonna give a chance to some of the people that aren't watching live to comment on the video as well so that they can win. But here's some other goodies that I've got for you because I love my live viewers the mostest. All right. These are some of the wooden buttons that I had that I used for our Christmas sweater recently. Okay, so here's a giraffe and here's a butterfly. So anytime somebody orders one of our so fail repeat shirts from our shop at dadzos.com, they get a handful of custom wood buttons. And then they also get a so fail repeat button from dad sews. And we've got some different versions of these. RD can tell you she's got a bunch of those, I think. And then we've got some of these that have letters on them. And these are really, really cute, especially I mean, look, I don't want to be gender specific and all that. I'll you know, get thrown off the web, but these are be cute for your little girl's outfits. There's a little Scotty dog. And uh, let's see. Oh, there's a little fish. So anyway, I'm going to be giving away some of these buttons to some of you as a thank you. So I'll probably message you here on YouTube to do that. If you're just joining me, don't forget to check out the Christmas tutorial I did for my Christmas tree skirt skirt. All right, there we go. And I built in a little pack right here so that it lights up. How beautiful is that? Definitely pretty cool. My daughter loved spinning around in it and she was mad that I was holding it for this video because she wanted to wear it to school and I was like, no, You'll not mess up my work. <laughs> You'll not mess up my work. I put a lot of time into that thing and a lot of, a lot of brains trying to figure out the circle skirt. Not that I have a lot of brains, but I could not really wrap my head around the math at first, which is why I put the easiest instructions I could find. Um, Deanne, I'm going to say, is it Diane or Deanne? Because there's no E you've confused me. Um, she said the buttons are so cute. They're very cute. Um, <laughs> Kiwi, our, our resident Kiwi, said kids' outfits, they'd be cute on mine. Yeah, they would be. They would definitely be. I even have some, uh, oh, there's one of the little birdies that we have. So, yeah, there's definitely some cool stuff here. And I will uh, be happy to send you guys some buttons for joining me. Thank you very much. Also, if you share this video or share my dad sews uh, video on facebook.com slash dad sews, trust me, you're going to get a, a better chance of winning a prize just because, you know, uh, scratching backs and such. 
you know, that kind of thing. So I really appreciate that. So if you're not currently a subscriber, please click subscribe. You know that every time we get a thousand more subscribers, we actually give away a Juki sewing machine. That's right, we give away Juki sewing machines here. So if that went to 6,000 before Christmas, boy, somebody would get a sweet Christmas present. So that's pretty cool. Um, Petri Blue said, you should make a matching ugly sweater vest like that skirt for your son. That's a good idea. But here's the thing, my kids wouldn't think they were ugly. They would just be like, those are cool, Papa. They don't call me dad, they call me Papa. <laughs> the tree skirt is cool and unique. Oh, thank you. I thought it, I mean, I hadn't seen one online. So I was thinking about tree skirts and last year we made a felt tree because we had a one-year-old toddler wandering around the house and it got poo-pooed online. Somebody said, oh, you're so soft on your kids. You can't have a real Christmas tree with ornaments. No, you're a millennial parent. I'm like, I'm 40, first of all. Second of all, I don't want my daughter possibly eating or stepping on glass. Or what would really happen is she would leave an ornament on the floor and then late at night at 2 a.m. when I hear somebody screaming and having a bad dream, I'm going to be the one stepping on glass. So I was kind of looking out for myself. I'll be honest. So we put up a felt Christmas tree. You can find that tutorial on Dad Sews. And um, then I thought, wow, what if I had a skirt Christmas tree where they could also put ornaments on and off? And you can do that on this, uh, but I just wanted to show the lights and such. We've got the ornaments hanging on other things right now. So it's pretty cool. The kids can take felt ornaments and pull them off, move them around their own clothes. So they're changing their own clothes on the fly. And then, of course, the lights are just like super awesome. Uh, Nancy said, hey, Nancy, does the box make it heavy? Honestly, it's really not heavy. I would say, I think it weighs as much as these shears do. Um, these are Fisker shears. I don't know if you've ever held any, so they're not the heaviest in the world because they've got plastic, really nice plastic handles. If you don't like Fisker for some reason, I don't know if they get a bad rap from anyone uh, that I know. I love them. Dudes love Fiskers. They make axes and everything. This is a dude's scissor right here. I love these shears. Um, I heard somebody poo-poo Fiskers, and then I found out that they just support another uh, company. So eh, these are great. They have remained sharp forever. Uh, love them. So this weighs about the same amount as this. My daughter didn't have a problem. And also, I made this longer than it needs to be. So it's kind of doubled up. I have a uh, double buttons on one of the parts so it can be adjusted here and here. So it can be loose if it goes over top of one of her sweaters or something thick or underneath. So that's kind of nice. But basically that puts the weight right in the back. It's right by the butt. So that's, you know, just something to think about where you're gonna put the pack. I think I got a felt string on me there. Uh, a millennial parent, Martin says, hey, uh, nothing against them, but I'm not one of them. <laughs> so that's all I'm saying. All right. Well, um, if like I said, uh, I want to give away some of these buttons and so fill repeat buttons to people. Um, oh, somebody said plus Fiskers has a replacement more. Yeah, Fiskers are awesome. I love Fiskers and I will always talk great about Fiskers. Uh, when I hear them poo-pooed, I put them in somebody's hand if I can and say, you cut with these and you tell me what you think of them. These things have been dropped on the floor by my kids. One of them once cut paper with them. Uh, and I know that I should have murdered them. Uh, but I, I love these shears. They're the first ones I got when I started filming for Dad Sews, which was coming up on two years ago. And they're still just as sharp as they were then. Um, and plus they make axes. So one day we're going to destroy a sewing machine with a Fisker axe. I promise you. Uh, a broken one, of course. Um, Mary uh, said, would love to see a tutorial on how you made the skirt and attach the lights. Okay, Mary, there is a tutorial on how I made the skirt. Um, a couple people have asked me to do one for the lights. The, the lights are really easy. Um, I will show you the back of them right now. Uh, all I did, the, the tutorial for the skirt is on Dad Sews. So go to youtube.com slash Dad Sews. It's going to be the video right below this one, okay? But then all I did here was I poked holes through the felt. Felt is really forgiving. 
and then I hot glued as soon as I, I put it through the hole and then pulled it back just enough so that the light was just sticking out, okay? And then I angled it down so that it was flat and they're LEDs so they don't get hot, okay? I angled it down so it's not sticking out and hitting things. And then I laid glue around the hole and under the hole so that I pressed it down onto the, the skirt. So all of them are hot glued down. It's very easy. And in my tutorial, I have a link for the light pack that I bought. It's cheap. Uh, it's efficient. These lights will never burn out because you only use it at Christmas time. And it even has a, it has a blink and a solid on button. So it, it's, it's genius. I love it. So yeah, check out the tutorial, Mary. And, uh, you know, Maybe I'll make one for the lights too. Maybe I'll do like just a little quick tutorial on how I did the lights, like a quick like Instagram video or something like that. Speaking of Instagram, you can follow me at Dad Sews. Uh, I know many of you do, but if you follow me there, sometimes we have some sponsors that say, hey, we really want to give out this cool thing on Instagram. And that's the only way to really get some of that stuff. Sponsors are weird. Sometimes they want to give stuff out on certain social media platforms. Mainly I do stuff on YouTube. But if you follow me at Dadzos on Instagram, that increases your chance of winning something awesome. Again, when we hit 6,000 subscribers, we're gonna be giving away another Juki sewing machine, which is totes awesome. Yeah, I said that. Maybe I am a millennial. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't. Please smash the like button. And I would love it if you shared this video and then tagged me on Facebook with it. And that way I know you shared and I can say, oh, there definitely went in some cool swag from Dad Sews. And I'll just be uh, randomly getting in touch with some of you to send you some stuff. Joyce M says, do you quilt? If so, do you hand quilt? Joyce, I said that this year was gonna be the year I made a quilt. And this was the year my wife had two surgeries and one went terribly wrong. So it did not happen. Um, <laughs> I mean, the surgery went okay, but she didn't come out of it great. Uh, so anyway, that has backpedaled a lot of stuff uh, with dad. So it's kind of uh, put the end of the year um, plans uh, in flux. So no, I don't quilt, but 2018 is going to be my quilting year. Uh, for sure, because I have access uh, through my friends at Fabricut to the long arm machines and the ones that do the computerized quilting and all that kind of stuff. I would probably not hand quilt, I'll be honest with you. I'm a machine guy, I love machines, I'm a nerd at heart, so I'm gonna use what the good Lord gave us through engineers. <laughs> And uh, thank you for sharing, RD, I really appreciate it. And uh, surfing in Arkansas, um, said not paper for my scissors or my shears. I, I mix up shears and scissors, but yes, my kids did use these for paper, um, but that's okay. We're close to Williamsburg, Virginia. So we actually have stocks from the old days and uh, I just drive them up there and I open it up. I put the stocks in, you can throw fruit at them, tomatoes, apples, bananas, you know, pineapples if you're really feeling mean. Um, and there's tourists that have hot cider. So yeah, I mean, there's things we can do. This is, this is a, you know, a right to work and right to live state, I guess, <laughs> in Virginia. So they have to work for their right to, to live <laughs> in my house and using these for paper is not a good idea. I didn't really put my kids in stocks, but I hope you all know that that's a joke. All right, uh, Joy said that's great. I'll be here to see. All right, that's awesome. I wanna make sure I didn't miss anybody else's comment. If I did, I apologize. But man, I really appreciate all you guys stopping by. It's just, it's awesome what Dad Sews has become. I, I don't have the followers, uh, the following that some of the other sewing channels have, um, but I'd rather just have a personal connection with my friends that I've made on Dad Sews, people like Rihanna, meeting other dudes like Martin. It's just cool to find these kind of people. So. You know, I'm, I'm really, really happy and blessed uh, now coming up on Christmas and post Thanksgiving that I have such great fans. Uh, when I posted a, that personal video about what happened to my wife uh, a month ago, just there was an outpouring of care and love from you guys. So I, I wouldn't trade any one of you uh, with anybody else's uh, fans. I just, I love you guys to death. And I don't say that 
um, just to be cheap or, or fake. I, I truly do love and appreciate all of you guys. It's, it's awesome. Um, Rihanna Dimson, 2018 will be the year of the quilt. That is for sure. Um, all right. So <laughs> I appreciate you guys joining me again, share with your friends, smash the like button and you'll probably be contacted, uh, by me, maybe each and every one of you for at least some buttons and stuff. And then, uh, we'll see who comments after it's live and who shares. And then we'll, you know, send out some of these awesome thread packs, which I think are pretty darn good. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget our motto is so fail repeat. And I will see you very soon. Hey, I hope you liked that video. Be sure to click right here to subscribe and you'll be instantly entered to win a free sewing machine. How cool is that? And click right here for another great video. Hey, it may be better than this one. Go on. I'll wait. Seriously, I have all day.